Good afternoon, I'm Jerome Barnett. And I'm Kate Van Dyke. Welcome to the Badger Report for Friday, November 19th. Coming up, Kyle Rittenhouse's fate is in the hands of the jury. We've got the details. Have you seen this symbol before? It's more than a wave. We'll explain later in the show. And we'll look at how one acapella group finds religion and music all in one. All that and more on the Badger Report. From Vilas Hall on the campus of the University of Wisconsin-Madison, this is The Badger Report. A Kenosha jury is deliberating today in Kyle Rittenhouse's trial. Rittenhouse is facing five charges, including homicide and attempted homicide, for shooting three people in August of 2020. The incident took place following the shooting of a 29-year-old black man, Jacob ba Blake, by a police officer. Rittenhouse is charged with killing two men, Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber, a third victim, Gage Grosskreutz, was shot in the arm but survived. The Badger Report's Gracie Lund is here to help unravel some of the twists and turns in this trial. That's right, Kate and Jerome. Prosecutors say Rittenhouse was a violent aggressor. While the defense argues Rittenhouse acted in self-defense, they are all also now asking the judge for a mistrial, saying they received an inferior copy of a key video from prosecutors. This came after the jurors requested to see video evidence of the shootings. The jurors were pared down from 18 to 12. They have more than 30 pages of instructions and must decide whether Rittenhouse provoked the attack. The jury can find Rittenhouse guilty of lesser charges if he is acquitted on the more serious counts. I spoke with attorney and partner at Pines Bach, Jordan Loeb, about the latest updates in this trial. Really, the strongest argument for the prosecution in this case is that he had no business going there armed. You know, regardless of his age, he, you know, he came from Illinois, heavily armed, looking for a confrontation. That's their argument. Loeb said that much of the discussion surrounding this controversial judge stems from allowing Rittenhouse to select the juror numbers out of the lottery box and his ruling that prosecutors could not refer to those shot by Rittenhouse as victims. But I think what we've seen since um, these pretrial rulings is a judge that really seems to have his I'm on the scale in favor of the defense in this case. And again, I say that as a defense attorney. Like I, I don't think I've ever been in a courtroom where the defense has the home court advantage to this extent, uh, frankly, to any extent. Loeb also says a gun charge was thrown out by the court based on a very narrow statute that says only short barrel rifles are illegal to carry. This case did not meet this definition. Gracie, the defense filed another mistrial motion on Wednesday. How will that affect the outcome? The defense team alleged video evidence was not properly shared by the prosecution. The judge says he will rule on the mistrial motions after the jury announces their verdict. Also, Governor Evers put 500 National Guard troops on standby in Kenosha in preparation for any protests about the decision. Thanks, Gracie. As many police officers prepare for the Rittenhouse verdict, a new study from the University of Pennsylvania looks into the Madison Police Department's response to large-scale protests. The Madison Police Department requested the study, which recommends nearly 70 ways the department can improve. It found 14 critical incidents disturbing. The protests studied in the survey were in response to the murder of George Floyd, the arrest of activist Devonir Johnson, and the shooting of Jacob Blake. Meanwhile, police are also utilizing social media to help catch criminals. A missing 16-year-old North Carolina girl was rescued in Kentucky after a driver noticed her using a hand gesture that is portrayed as a sign of distress on TikTok. The driver called 911 and authorities arrested the suspect for unlawful imprisonment at the scene. This gesture, an international signal for help, is what the driver remembered seeing on TikTok. Life sciences professor Dominique Brassard says there are specific cases where TikTok can make a positive impact on its users when society decides to use it in ways like these. I think the new technology are bad and good at the same time, depending how society decided to use it and depending how users themselves use it. And in the context of the, the signal for help, TikTok is the great place to do that, so, to have really millions of people to see it. But remember, 
also, but things could be shared the same way. Wisconsin Democratic Governor Tony Evers has vetoed Republican-drawn redistricting maps, naming them gerrymandering 2.0. Republicans would need Democratic support to override the veto, but they do not have enough votes. Final decisions will head to the state Supreme Court and the federal court. COVID-19 cases continue to rise across the state as the holiday season approaches. Eight Wisconsin counties have critically high levels of COVID-19, 62 counties have very high levels of COVID-19, and two counties have high levels of COVID-19. The current seven-day average for COVID cases in Wisconsin is just shy of 3,000 per day. It turns out it's not just people getting infected with COVID-19. Deer can also carry the virus. Wisconsin health officials are issuing new safety precautions for deer hunters just before the season begins tomorrow. They recommend hunters wear masks and disposable gloves when handling or cleaning the carcasses. Many students experience stress or other mental health issues while in college. Miriam Jabber and Amina, Amuna Saleh look into why one group of students at UW receives more mental health support than others. No, I wasn't aware that engineering students got unlimited therapy sessions. And I do think that's slightly unfair just since other majors can also be extremely vigorous and time consuming. And your major doesn't necessarily depict what's going on in your personal life that could also affect your mental health. What I've heard of the UHS mental health um, department, people do seem to get the impression that resources are limited. This is a stark contrast to the mental health services provided to students at the College of Engineering. This school does a really good job of um, uh, advertising that, hey, UHS is available. If you ever need it, you can come here, you can call this number, you can email this person, or, you know, there's just walk-in times you can just walk in and talk to someone. So the question is, why is there a greater focus on mental health at the College of Engineering compared to other schools at UW-Madison? Like, a lot of this comes down to the funding sources. That's really based off of um, the College of Engineering itself, finding that, um, there's a lot of additional mental health stress um, for their students. There's unique concerns that they experience. There's a, a high academic rigor that really amplifies a lot of the same concerns that other students are facing. Um, so they made it a priority to set aside some funds for this increased access. It is unclear whether more focus will be put on mental health here at UW-Madison. For the Badger Report, this is Amuna Saleh. Everyone loves a good Thanksgiving meal, but what about a Thanksgiving basket? Coming up, we learn how one group is helping families, large and small, enjoy the festivities. At the turn of the last century, we made a promise to our state. We promised that we would not rest until we made life better for Wisconsin. We looked in our own backyard and we planted different crops, bred new herds, identified vitamins, improved harvesting machinery, established food safety standards, and churned a lot of ice cream. We haven't stopped working to make life better for our state and the world on Wisconsin. This right here is the closet we were in. That was the only thing left of the house. The only thing. Red Cross helped us and they literally got us back on our feet. Huge outpouring of love just going, people care. We didn't come out of there saying, wow, we lost everything. We came out of there hugging each other, glad that we were okay. It's the season of giving this year in Madison. It really is, Jerome. The Badger Report's Kelsey Tehan tells us how the Goodman Center and local residents are giving back. The Goodman Community Center is having its 33rd annual Thanksgiving basket drive this year, and community members are eager to help. I think especially during the pandemic, a lot of people felt like they could see our community was hurting and they wanted to find a way to, to provide some help. And so this Thanksgiving basket program is a, is a way for people to kind of do their, their piece. Some Madison locals even took it into their own hands to organize donations. We did a food drive. I put it on social media and, and like Tom said, our, need, uh, our sidewalk and driveway. We drew pictures and just let everybody know that was walking by that Sunday. We were noon to three. We were going to be outside and anybody could drop off their stuff. Over 4,000 Madison families will benefit this Thanksgiving from the donations made to the Goodman Community Center. But that doesn't happen without help from people like Tom and Kathy Haynes. Both Francesca and the Haynes agree it truly takes a village. 
I definitely get nervous. Um, but each year our community delivers and it's really an inspiring thing to see. We were overwhelmed by the amount that we got, but at the same time knowing the list that they're uh, attempting to make, we knew it was just a fraction of help. And so we thought, well, if we can help, then, then it takes a village. For the Badger Report, I'm Kelsey Tehan. The Goodman Community Center will be accepting money and food donations through November 22nd. Speaking of the holiday season, airport officials say flyers should arrive at the Madison Airport at least an hour before, an hour and a half before their scheduled departure time. As travelers get ready for Thanksgiving, TSA workers are also facing a tight deadline to get vaccinated by November 22nd. Despite this mandate, federal employees say they do not expect any major disruptions for holiday travel. Airports aren't the only ones expecting an increase in business, so are stores preparing for holiday shoppers. It's time to start thinking about buying gifts for your loved ones. But with COVID-19 having plagued the world for over a year, there are a few things to take into account before your shopping lists are filled out. UW-Madison professor of supply chain management, Peter Luxis, says retailers and shoppers should expect more delays due to supply chain disruptions resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. Going back uh, to work or back to school, um, we needed things to, to wear again. Uh, and apparel is, is really concentrated with where it's, it's manufactured in the world, Vietnam, Bangladesh, China. So, you know, it's coming in from, from those ports. So, you know, with, with apparel specifically that you were, you were asking about, I think the impact is going to be less selection. Luxus says this will also be seen in the sizes of clothing as well as numerous other consumer goods. His advice, shop local and maybe think about service or digital gifts when the shopping time comes around. This may be the last weekend to enjoy temperatures in the 40s before the cold weather hits. Up next, Miriam Jabber gives us a look at our temporary warm-up. But winter is coming. Progress is an endless challenge. Here at the University of Wisconsin, we're a community of innovators in constant motion. We think on our feet, connect with each other, and hit our stride, pushing past limits. Progress is an endless challenge. But it is only those up to the challenge who change the game. The University of Wisconsin is the number one school in producing Fortune 500 CEOs, PhDs, Peace Corps volunteers, NCAA tournament basketball teams, and bowl football teams in the last 25 years. That doesn't surprise me because if you get a Badger, you get an all-star on and off the field. You know what they say, and it's true. When you say Wisconsin, you've said it all. I love it. Temps have roller coastered in the last week or so, but that's the weather in Wisconsin, I guess. The Badger Report's Miriam Jabber takes a look at what we can expect during the last weekend before Thanksgiving. Winter is coming. Temperatures are dropping and snow is preparing to fall, but this weekend offers one last hurrah of warmish weather. Starting today, there will be mostly cloudy skies with a high of 31 degrees and a low of 21. But don't worry, the sun will come out just in time for the weekend. Friday will have sunshine all day with a high of 39 before temperatures drop to a low of 31 later in the evening. Saturday morning will have mostly cloudy skies that could clear up just in time for Wisconsin's final home game against Nebraska. And fans attending are in luck as temperatures will be at a high of 48 degrees by the 2.30 p.m. kickoff. However, temperatures will drop to a low of 31 by sunset, so be sure to layer up if you plan to stay for all four quarters. Mostly cloudy skies will continue to appear on Sunday, in addition to a 50% chance of rain throughout the day. Temperatures will be at a high of 42 before getting to a low of 23 degrees in the evening with a 50% chance of snow paired along with it. So, if there's a new soup recipe you've been dying to try or a movie marathon you've been wanting to have, Sunday is definitely your day to do it. Looking ahead at Thanksgiving week, temperatures will be consistently in the 30s. This was your Madison weekend weather update, and for the Badger Report, I'm Miriam Jabber. Thanks, Miriam. Have you or someone you know studied abroad? The chances are pretty good. A recent report ranked UW-Madison as number four in the country for its study abroad participation. The Open Doors Report, which is affiliated with the Departments of State and Education, listed the university as number 15 in 2020. That's quite a jump. I know lots of people who have studied abroad. Coming up, find out how the men's basketball team fared in the Gavit tip-off game. 
The Badger Report's Ryan Wollersheim has the sports update right after the break. More than a century ago, we made a commitment to our state. We promised to educate the sons and daughters of Wisconsin. More than a million students have passed through our doors. Our alumni have gone on to cure diseases, grow crops, build skyscrapers, found companies, score touchdowns, orbit the moon, and achieve beyond our wildest dreams, but not beyond theirs. On Wisconsin. You only know in a fire to get out, to escape, and now, okay, you're outside and you're safe. What do you do now? And that's where the Red Cross came in. We ran out of the house just wearing our pajamas. And at that point, just to even have a toothbrush that I could call my own was so important. You know, it just makes you feel like a person again. Basketball, football, and hockey are in full swing. Luckily, the Badger Report's Ryan Wollersheim is here with the scoop. Thanks, Kate and Jerome. Wisconsin football kept it rolling this past weekend, securing its sixth straight win after a shaky 1-3 and three start to the season. Yeah! Freshman sensation Braylon Allen stepped up big with number one back Chaz Malusi out for the remainder of the season. Allen led the Badgers with three rushing touchdowns en route to a 35-7 victory over the Northwestern Wildcats. The Badgers now sit tied atop the Big Ten West Division, holding the tiebreaker over the fellow division leader, Iowa Hawkeyes. With a clear path to the Big Ten Championship, the Badgers will host the Nebraska Cornhuskers tomorrow afternoon for this, for this season's final home game. The Badger men's and women's cross-country teams will be running all the way to Florida for this year's NCAA Championships. Both teams placed second in the Great Lakes Regional last weekend, earning automatic qualifying spots to the NCAA Championships as all 13 runners ran personal best times. The Badgers run for a title in Tallahassee will begin tomorrow morning with the women's 6,000 meter race set to start at 9.20 a.m., followed by the men's 10,000 meters shortly thereafter. Thanks to Dale Nigeman for that video and Carol Chen for those photos. The Badger men's basketball team hosted the Providence Friars at the Kohl Center on Monday. The game marked the opening night of the annual Gavit tip-off games between the Big Ten and Big East conferences. With leading scorer Johnny Davis down, senior Brad Davison carried the team offensively, putting the Badgers up 18 to 12 11 minutes into the game. Shortly after Badger big men Stephen Kroll and Chris Vogt got into early foul trouble, allowing the Friars to go on a 19-5 scoring run behind center Nate Watson's 16 first-half points. The Badgers would cut the lead to five with just over three minutes remaining, but Wisconsin's prayers for a comeback will go unanswered as the team suffered its first loss of the season, 63-58. Tyler Wall and Brad Davison would finish as the only Badgers to score more than five points in the game. Here's what Davison and coach Greg Gard had to say about the team's struggles on offense. You know, I think without Jacoby and without Johnny and then also without having our two big men on the floor, there's a lot of things that um, you know, mess with the flow offensively. We dug ourselves out too much of a hole first half, obviously with some second chance points and some turnovers that led to fouls too, so it was a double whammy. This young Badger team will look to bounce back next week Monday when they travel to Las Vegas for the 2021 Maui Gym Invitational for a matchup against the Texas A&M Aggies. That's it for this week's Wisconsin Sports Updates. For the Badger Report, I'm Ryan Wollersheim. Thanks, Ryan. Coming up next, a Jewish a cappella group shares how they connect, to rel connect religion to music. I met up with them on campus to give voice to their story. That's next on the Badger Report. In 1905, we made a promise. We promised that our work at Wisconsin would make life better for our state. Our research has developed crops, restored lakes, cured diseases, uncovered history, peered into space, and saved lives. More than a century later, we've not only kept our promise to Wisconsin, we've extended it to the world. On Wisconsin. I thought Red Cross does Katrina. They don't help single moms. Hi. What happened to our house last year it about your birthday? It flooded and the water flooded out, yeah. The Red Cross arranged the hotel for us. They gave me that break, that leverage, to be able to get it together and uh, take care of them, you know? I feel like we've come full circle. Like that. Mm -hmm. This is how I'll do it. There you go. 
One UW-Madison student organization on campus puts a unique twist on the art form of a cappella. And as I found out, it's not just the chord progressions that keep them together. We are a culturally Jewish a cappella group, which is which means that we do music by Jewish artists or whenever we can, we do traditional music, Jewish music as well. A cappella is a way of performing music without instruments, so we sing all of the parts that instruments would usually make up in a song. I just love that kind of music and classical, I suppose classical genres like that, there's not any other a cappella group on campus that does that. <laughs> found what I was looking for here. It wasn't so much the focus on Judaism, it was just the people that were involved. I was really drawn to them. They were very welcoming and open. I came and I auditioned, and I really liked the people. So I, I am Jewish also, so that is convenient. But so I, you know, I came for the a cappella and I stayed for the people. It's definitely grown. I didn't know very much about Judaism before I joined this group, and I'm learning more and more every time that I come to a rehearsal. I didn't know a lick of Hebrew or Yiddish, but learned a bit of that now. There's some songs that I've been singing for my whole life, and I've never actually had to really think about what they mean, and now I do. Nice. Kate, the group will have their fall concert on December 13th at the Memorial Union. Thanks, Jerome. It sounds interesting. That's all for today. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of the Badger Report. We will see you again in three weeks on December 10th for our final newscast of the semester. Have a great weekend and break. <laughs>